Welcome to the Mama Stay Fit YouTube channel. In this episode, we're going to be talking about what to expect at your first prenatal appointment. Hey, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Gina. I'm a perinatal fitness trainer and birth doula. And I'm Roxanne. I'm a labor and delivery nurse and student midwife. And so both Roxanne and I are moms of three, so we're going to be sharing our personal experience of what happens at your first prenatal appointment in addition to our professional experience as birth workers. During that first prenatal visit, this is the first time that your either midwife or OB is meeting you. So this is where they're going to get a lot of that history from you, of like your medical histories, if you've had children before, what were those birth experiences like, and then kind of what to expect during this pregnancy. You might meet like an OB counselor who like goes over what to expect at the clinic of like when every appointment will be and what will be discussed at every appointment, as well as information for your hospital. And they might give you like a little bit of a tour of the clinic. So they're also going to do certain labs at your first prenatal appointment. So one, it's going to be a urine test as well as a blood test. The blood test they're looking at, like what is your blood type? They're going to look at a complete blood count. So like what is your white blood cells, red blood cells, platelets, those kind of things, as well as certain like screening. So one is hepatitis B, HIV, as well as syphilis. So those things are all taken out of the blood to see like potentially do you have hepatitis B? Do we need to treat baby? Do you have syphilis? Do we need to treat that? Do you have HIV? Again, these are things that are important for the baby. They can also do a pap smear at that first prenatal visit, and this is one to eat. If you are due for a pap smear, they can do that testing then. They can also do a sexually transmitted infection panel for chlamydia and gonorrhea, which are two sexually transmitted infections that could affect baby, so they want to know if you have it so they can treat it. This first prenatal appointment is usually between six to 10 weeks, depending on your clinic and depending on your provider. And this is when they also offer a first trimester ultrasound or more commonly called the dating ultrasound. And this is because most babies in that first six to 10 weeks are about the same exact size. So they can do a dating ultrasound to see if your dates, like based off of your last menstrual period, kind of line up with that dating ultrasound or if they need to adjust your due date. And Gina's due date was actually adjusted after her first prenatal appointment. So for my first pregnancy, at my first prenatal appointment, I had a dating ultrasound. And my menstrual cycle did not match what my actual due date was. It actually got pushed back like 10 days because of the dating ultrasound. And it was because I ovulated later in my cycle. So if you are not sure exactly when you ovulated, it can be really helpful to have that dating ultrasound. Because at the end of my pregnancy, I was actually 10 days overdue by the time I went into labor. And if I had had my original due date, I would have been induced to like two weeks earlier. And so it's really important to have an accurate due date. If you are tracking your ovulation and that dating ultrasound or even your last menstrual period kind of changes your due date from your ovulation date, just know that you can say, I know when I ovulated and I know that that's a more accurate due date assessment and kind of stick with that due date. And so the last thing that happens at your prenatal appointment is you meet your provider and you start to get a feel of whether or not they're a good match for you. And so know that really any point during your pregnancy, you typically have the option to switch providers. You may not have another provider in your immediate area. You may have to travel a little bit more. And so this first appointment is a good opportunity for you to get a good feel for the clinic and for what to expect during your birth. Your first prenatal visit, if you're delivering at a hospital, could look a lot different than if you're having an out-of-hospital delivery at a birth center or a home birth. So Gina, what did your first home birth visit look like for your last pregnancy? And so it really depends on your midwife. So for my midwife, she doesn't do in-house ultrasounds or labs. So I had to go to another clinic to do my ultrasounds and labs. And so I had dual care during my pregnancy. And so there was an OB clinic that I went to to get all my lab work and to get my ultrasounds throughout my entire pregnancy. And if I risked out of home birth, they would become my provider. So they were kind of like my secondary care. Not every provider is into being the backup for a home birth, though, depending on their own feelings about home birth. And so if you are planning to have an out-of-hospital birth, know that you may want some secondary care. So you have some continuity if you do have to transition your care. And so because I didn't have labs and ultrasounds in-house at her clinic, our first prenatal appointment was more of like an intake appointment. So we were going over like what I was wanting during my pregnancy. We were going over the results of my ultrasounds and my labs. She had already been a midwife for me, so we already had a relationship established, but this would have been a really good opportunity for us to really get to know one another. And so she was going over like what type of support I had at home, what I was doing to exercise, and the whole appointment was about an hour long. And then she also took like my vitals and everything as well. So it was a pretty standard 
appointment, but because she doesn't have the labs and ultrasounds in house, I had to go somewhere else to get those. So I kind of had like two first prenatal appointments. Whereas at the birth center that I worked at, I know they did have lab capabilities and they had an ultrasound to do things. So they could do all of that at that first prenatal visit. But the difference probably is like the amount of time that you actually have with your provider. So Gina had about an hour with her like first visit for her prenatal care. And usually most of her visits during her entire OB care was about an hour. And that's similar at a lot of birth centers that they'll have about an hour slot for all of your visits versus at a hospital, like they're going to have shorter visits for you where actually talking with your provider for maybe 15, maybe 30 minutes if you're lucky, because just those out-of-hospital providers have a lot more time that they can put into their patients, and they're not seeing as many patients every day, versus at the hospital clinics, they're seeing a lot of patients in a day. During my first two pregnancies, I primarily had like OB or midwife care that was based in a hospital. I would say the amount of time that I spent with the provider was anywhere from like five to 10 minutes, unless I had a lot of questions. And then it was maybe 15 minutes. I would say the majority of my time was with the nurse to do all my vitals, waiting in the room, and then really quickly meeting them. And like Roxanne said, it's really about the volume of patients. And so an out-of-hospital provider is probably not going to have as many patients. And so they have more time to devote to each patient that they have versus someone who maybe has a higher volume clinic. Something that your clinic may offer for pregnancy is something called centering. So this is where you're doing all of your OB visits with like a group of people, the number of people in your group kind of just dependent, but they're around the same due date. So you have like this kind of support system that it's developing and you can opt in either before your first visit or your first visit is with everyone in your centering group, which can be a really cool thing, especially for first time birthers. So that was something that I did during my second pregnancy was centering, and it was a two-hour appointment. The first hour would be each of us doing vitals on one another, and we would meet with the midwife as well. And it was the same midwife every appointment. And then the last hour was like education. So they would bring in outside educators to teach us about pel for pt to teach us about nutrition. And so it was really cool to get a little bit more time with the provider and also an opportunity for my more education during my pregnancy and connecting with other folks that were around the same due date as me, which was pretty cool. A lot of people really like the support concept with centering because you can meet people, one, that are in that same phase of life as you, so you can bond with them a little bit more. And then you always have that postpartum visit afterwards where everyone brings their babies and so like the babies get to meet each other for the first time on the outside, which is kind of cool to see. So I think centering is a really cool op- like is a really cool option that is available for people that may be available at your clinic if you want to look into that. And so at your first prenatal appointment, you could expect to meet your provider and start to get a good feel from the birth environment that you're choosing to give birth with. You're also going to get a lot of lab work, potentially an ultrasound. If they're not offering you ultrasound and you want one, you could say that you don't know when your last menstrual cycle was and they will offer you an ultrasound to get an accurate due date for you. So that was like something that I did during my first pregnancy because I didn't really know what was going on with my body. Um, So if you do want an ultrasound, you can just say that you don't know your last menstrual cycle or that your periods are regular and that can be a way to get an ultrasound if you do want that early one. If you want to learn more about the science of birth and prepare throughout your pregnancy for your birth experience, join our online childbirth education course. This is a self-paced course and you maintain lifetime access of the course and there's closed captioning in case you don't want to listen to our voices at all. Maybe you don't like the sound of our voices. I am sorry, but there's closed captioning so you don't have to listen to it. Um, The course is all available online, so you can work through it at your own pace, and there's tons of information in it. We teach you all about the anatomy of birth, what is happening in your uterus, how does a contraction even happen, labor positions, comfort measures, all about pushing, and your birth options so you know what to choose during your birth that best suits the birth that you're wanting. We also offer an in-person class here in our facility in Aberdeen, North Carolina. If you are local to us, you will get access to our online self-paced course, but you have more in-person support with showing labor comfort techniques and different labor positions in person here at our facility that you can check out. We offer it once a month, usually the last Sunday of the month, but we sometimes change it because we can do that. And just for listening to this video all the way to the end, you can use code YouTube10 to get 10% off our online fitness programs, our online childbirth education course, and literally anything that we offer online. And so if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you get notified whenever we release new videos. If there's a specific topic that you're wanting to learn more about, or if you have questions, drop them below in the comments so that we can make sure that we answer your questions for you. 